Welcome to XR template tutorial lesson number 32. And this XR Web Designer 7 Premium tutorial will be going over how to access graphics from the graphics folder within the designs gallery. If you haven't already, go ahead and start a blank new document in XR Web Designer 7 Premium. Once you do that, go ahead and make sure that your designs gallery is accessible from the right side of your screen. If you don't see that uh, folder on the right hand side of your screen, which you see here, designs gallery, then go ahead and go to your utilities, galleries, and make sure that the designs gallery box is checked next to it. So if there's a check mark next to designs gallery, then you should be fine. If not, then left click on it so that it is checked. And once you do that, you'll open the designs gallery and we're going to lock that panel for now. Now, before we go ahead and go to uh, the graphics folder, I want to just quickly say that what you see on my workspace is something that is a combination of a graphic that I pulled from the designs gallery and I placed like a background behind it. I added a shadow and I added some text so you can kind of convert the graphics that are in the graphics folder in the designs gallery kind of into your own piece of work and we're going to go ahead and, and I'm actually going to move this out of the workspace and we'll go ahead and open up the graphics folder so go to your designs gallery and left click on the graphics folder and you'll see a series of graphics that you can use and in this case you can see the light bulb that I used in that design and if you left click and drag that into the workspace you'll see that you can now use this light bulb in your designs and this light bulb can be resized to any size that you want and it'll never blur you know you'll never see pixels and part of that is because this was designed in a vector based program which is XR Web Designer it's a vector based program so you'll never see pixels in your designs that are designed in here because it's vector based so just remember anytime you're dealing with um, things that you design in this program you won't see pixels unless you you know export it to a different format than um, what was originally created in this program and don't worry if you don't understand those terminologies you don't really need to know that right now I just thought I would mention it since we're dealing with uh, graphics in the graphics folder but as as usual when you drag a, a item from the designs gallery if it has name colors you can change multiple colors at once so let's go ahead and go to the color editor and then we'll click the drop down menu and you'll see theme color 1F and if or yours may say theme color 1 and if you change the colors well actually I'm gonna go to undo you should choose theme color 1 because I have two of them so it added an extra theme color but if you drag that around you'll see that this color changes to whatever color we want it but I'm gonna convert it back to the original color which should be the yellow and you can drag any of these icons I'm sorry any of these graphics not icons you could drive any of these graphics into your workspace so if you want to use the camera the camera here you could left click and drag that into the workspace and again you would be able to change the colors and if you watched any of the previous tutorials you know about text panels or you know photo galleries that kind of stuff you already should be pretty familiar with how to add items from your designs gallery into your workspace I'm just covering this because I know some people may not be aware that there's a lot of different graphics that you have access to like if you wanted to use these headphones you could left click and drag the headphones in I'm, got, I'm not going to match it in this case and you can add headphones maybe your site site deals with music you know any of those things you can grab them from this graphics folder and it kind of gives you a head start on adding different graphics to you know represent different things on your website so just kind of scroll through here and find out what fits best with you for example you might have a 30 day money back guarantee so you might use that as an asset on your on your website you, you know you might be doing construction I mean it's just a ton of graphics in here that you can use maybe you're in a painting business you could use a painting brush I mean just so many so many graphics in here just ridiculous amount even social type of con icons I mean I, I mean not icons but you even got social graphic media images in here like podcasting RSS feeds uh, Twitter YouTube 
So just a big chunk of things that you can access. Uh, a calendar, checklist. I mean, it just goes on and on. So many, so many graphics that you can access in here. So, but let's go ahead and show you how I created what I did for this light bulb. Before I do that, I want to show you this cool MP3 player too. So left, -click, left click and drag that in there, and you can use this MP3 player instead, instead of the earphones. But I thought it was pretty nice for them to include this MP3 player. It looks really nice. And I think it'll make your website stand out if you're dealing with music. But I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And I'm going to delete these headphones. And I'm going to show you how I made this cool looking kind of almost like a logo using this light bulb. So let's go ahead and close the designs gallery. And we're going to go ahead and replicate the graphic that I created. So once you have your light bulb and your workspace, the next thing you're going to do is go to your toolbar and select the circle tool or the circle or ellipse quick shape. And once you do that, we're going to hold the control key, left click and drag and draw kind of a mid-sized circle and then go to your selection tool in the toolbar and then drag that over over your your uh, light bulb. And then open your page and layer gallery and lock the panel for that so you can see our, our layers and you'll see that where the ellipse is at and right now the ellipse is above the light bulb so we're going to left click and drag that beneath that light bulb and if you look in your workspace now you'll see that this circle is now beneath the light bulb okay and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring up the color editor so go to your left hand bottom hand corner of your website and choose the color editor that'll pop up and then select your local fill color if it's not already in there if you see local fill color let's kind of go to a greenish color or you can choose whatever color it doesn't have to be green I kind of actually like the red so I'm gonna stick with kind of a medium red and then we're gonna go ahead and add a line color so select the drop down menu in the color editor and select line color local line color and then go to your menu up here at the top to set the line width and we're going to set it to about I don't know let's see I have to figure out what size I use probably about a 24 no maybe 32 let me scroll over to see how big I made it uh, maybe out of 48 so that's a little too big so we're going to go with about 30 32 so make your make your line with a 32 pixel width and then for your local line color within the color editor we're going to make sure we make that a I don't know slightly lighter red and I'll kind of adjust that it doesn't have to be a perfect red but as you can see it's slightly a little brighter red and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a shadow to the light bulb so left click and select your light bulb and then go to your shadow tool in your toolbar and then we're going to go to the info bar at the top here and add a floor shadow and we're going to left click and drag that floor shadow so that it looks similar to the one that we have on the right and then we're going to add some blur so increase your blur in the info bar and decrease your transparency so you get a nice dark shadow behind that light bulb and as you can see we're almost all the way there we're very close to finishing this up okay and you know what I'm gonna probably darken up my middle circle a little bit the fill color a little bit more so I bring I'm gonna bring up the color other and I'm gonna make that that fill local fill color a little bit darker it's just not quite where I wanted it about there that seems pretty good okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select this circle that we created behind the light bulb, this one here. And you don't have to move it, I'm just showing you which one I'm talking about. And then when you select this circle, we're going to hit Control plus C and make a copy. And then we're going to go to Edit in our menu, go to Paste, and then go to Paste in Place. That's going to make an exact copy on top of our other objects. And I'll show you that it's under there. You'll see that our old stuff is still there. Just happen to have the circle on top of it. And then we're going to go to our color editor again. 
and we're going to select this option at the bottom of the color editor that looks like a fence and that's just going to clear the local fill color make sure that you have the local fill color selected in the color editor which is up here you should see it says local fill color so if that's selected you're going to go down to this icon that looks like a fence and left click on that and it clears the fill color but the line color is still there if you and if you drag that out you'll see that the line color is still there just the fill color is, is empty and I'm going to undo that and you can undo it by hitting the key up here if you needed to undo it so once you do that the next thing you're going to do is left click just in an empty space in your work workspace <coughs> I'm sorry coughing a little bit there and then you're going to select the text tool and then left click anywhere in your document in this case I have Arial text set as my font type at about 13 pixels I'm probably going to make it a little bit bigger I'll probably make it about 18 pixels and then I'm going to start typing and we're going to call it bright actually I'm going to make it all caps bright idea company and I'm going to actually make this bold text so select your selection tool actually no double click on the text and then hit control A to select all the text hit the bold bold option in your info bar and make that bold and let me see what text I used here that's Arial black actually we're going to change the font type we're going to make the font type an Arial black so choose Arial black from your your font menu and then we're going to go ahead and select the selection tool once you make that the new font type so once you get this set to Arial black let's go ahead and left click select that circle the outer line circle that we created like this I'll sh I'm showing you that's why I'm moving it around so you'll see what circle I'm talking about so once you select that go ahead and hold down your shift key and then left click on the text and now you have two objects selected in a way that you know that is if you look down at your status bar it'll say two objects on layer mouse off so you'll know that you have two objects selected if it says it's so there once you have those two objects selected go to arrange in your menu bar at the top and then go to fit text to curve and when you do that it will fit your text to that curve and what you're going to do is you're going to double click on the text hit control A and in your color editor set it to white and close your color editor select the selection tool and now you'll have that same text that we had on this one now we're going to left click on the text not not double click just one click and then left click it the tech second time so make sure there's a delay between each click so left click on it once wait about one or two seconds left click it again and then you'll see that the arrows turn into like a curve meaning that you can rotate it around the axis so holding well you don't even have to hold the control key you can just kind of move it around and position it so that it's at the top like this one is for the one that I created and then once you get it in the right position we're going to left click on it to make sure that it's selected I, I deselected it by clicking in the workspace so if you didn't do that don't worry about that if you still have it selected go ahead and go to the top up here at the top of your website and look for the one that says many and you're going to set it to none and what that's going to do is that's going to remove that line that was there and as you can see if we move the text now it doesn't have a line behind it it only has the one that we created originally behind the light bulb so if you now left click that text once and drag it down somewhere you'll see that it's a little bit more like what we created on the right hand side and don't worry if this isn't perfect I mean one other thing that you can do is you can just drag one of the outer nodes and drag inward and it'll adjust it proportionately so you can either drag it downward which it may be a little off or you can just press select the text and push these arrows in a little bit and then just kinda adjust it so that it's similar to the one on the right so that's how I made that that uh, icon and I think it looks pretty cool and I, I think some of you people will uh, like this on YouTube and if you did like this tutorial and thought it was helpful and learning how to not only put the graphics in your workspace but also learning how you can kind of make it into your own style or design uh, definitely give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to stay tuned for future tutorials and if you have any suggestions 
definitely let us know and we'll try to make a tutorial based on your suggestions. Thanks again for watching this tutorial and we hope that you stay tuned for future tutorials on how to learn to use Xara Web Designer 7 Premium.